Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ, with daily insight on the NASDAQ 100 Index, or the NDX, which is made up of 100 of the largest domestic and international non-financial innovative companies listed on NASDAQ. The NDX has been the barometer for U.S. large cap growth and also one of the best performing indexes over the last decade and a half, not to mention one of the most liquid index ecosystems in the world. Joining me this Tuesday afternoon, we have Sean Cruz, Manager of Trader Services at TD Meritrade, to discuss NASDAQ 100 performance trends in the NASDAQ Volatility Index, or VOLQ. We'll also take a look at inflation expectations. Sean, it's great to see you as always. Welcome back to Trade Talks. And let's pull up your first set of charts here with some fresh levels to watch in the NASDAQ 100. Yeah, I think we're looking at on these pretty strong pullback that we've had across the board over the past couple of days. Um, it has uh, been a little bit more focused in tech due to a lot of those concerns, I think, originating from um, what's going on in Southeast Asia. But looking right now at some of these levels, um, I think 14,757 on the downside um, is actually a, a pretty, I'm sorry, yeah, 14,787 on the downside is uh, an interesting area to watch. Um, I think that is going to look to be support. We were able to hold that, and now we're moving higher. So I'm actually watching um, at 15,000 now to see if we can break above that. I think a close above that would actually be pretty encouraging um, for the market, just in terms of is this maybe the market stabilizing itself and an opportunity maybe to come in and, and get some uh, buying done if you do have some names you've been keeping an eye on um, that you want to add to your portfolio. And Sean, if we take a look at the NASDAQ Volatility Index, or what we call VOLQ, any clues in there in terms of chop heading, you know, as we close out the quarter this week and, and move into October, which is historically a little bit of a volatile month as well? Yeah, it's still when you'd expect some choppiness, but if you, you think about it, we, we like to use that rule of, of 16, where you take that level and divide it by 16. It'll give you a, a rough range for uh, marks to trade, at least over the short term. And it's telling you to expect some moves a little bit north of 1%, but I, I think it's telling you you don't need to necessarily be on the lookout for a massive 3 4 5% pullback. I think this is just indicating a little bit of choppiness. But if you look at the, the relative strength indicator um, for the NASDAQ 100 index, it's sort of starting to hit some of those lows um, and, and coming down to the bottom end of those range where some uh, technical analysts would say it's a little bit oversold. So it'll be interesting to see if as we do get lower and lower on that relative strength, if maybe that is what leads to more buyers coming in. And Sean, let's talk about inflation expectations. I mean, we're seeing it this week in the oil patch, you know, trading over 80 bucks today um, and you're starting to feel it just even when you go regular food shopping and so forth. I mean, inflation certainly has crept back in for a, a number of reasons. Yeah, and I was actually expecting when I went to look at inflation expectations, I expected to see a pretty decent pop um, and, and a move significantly higher because we have broken out of sort of this range that we had been in um, over the past couple of months where we were sort of stuck below that one and a half percent level. Um, and we moved from 1.4% up to 1.5% above pretty quickly. I was expecting that to really be driven by some very large inflation expectation increases. And we necessarily didn't get that. I think that is one thing that's interesting. And what that has done is led to a, an increase now in, in real yields um, in some areas of the curve. And I think that increase in real yields is what it has maybe been driving a lot of volatility um, in those interest rate sensitive sectors. Um, so that will be something to keep an eye on moving forward. Um, what goes on with inflation expectations? We may be waiting to get some more data out um, later this week on exactly really what sort of inflation levels we are experiencing and see if maybe that does move uh, those inflation expectations higher or lower. All right, Sean, appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.